Sam Banu. Welcome back to Let's Explore Mongolia. This is our final session, exploring what life is like in this incredible country and learning about how God is working here. I hope you can remember all you've learned so far on our journey with Batar. From traveling through the plains, sleeping in a gur, trying butter tea, and seeing lots of children receive winter kits, we have had quite an adventure. Today, we're in a different city in the far north of the country. It took a very long bus journey to get here, but we've arrived in a place called Erdenet. We're here to visit a special training center and to learn how the church is growing in Mongolia. Back in our first video, we learned that Mongolia was once a communist country where it was very difficult to be a Christian. In fact, in 1989, uh, just over 30 years ago, there were only four known Christians in the entire country. The country was known as the end of the world because of how remote it was and how closed it was to outsiders. God answered years of prayers and opened up the nation. This meant that missionaries were able to come to Mongolia and because people could finally hear the gospel, the church began to grow. Today, there are more than just four Christians in Mongolia. There are tens of thousands. How amazing is that? We've arrived at a building in Erdenet called the Mongolian Mission Center. Batar tells us that Christians come here to learn more about God and be trained for ministry. When you step inside, you find groups of students chatting to one another. These people all have a deep desire to share the gospel with those who have never heard it before. They all love Jesus so much that they want to spend their lives telling other people about him. On the wall, you notice a huge map. As you get closer to it, you see that it's a map of Mongolia, a bit like the map that you should have in front of you. But the students of the Mongolian Mission Center haven't been sticking stickers on it and coloring it in like you have. Instead, it's covered in lots and lots of little red dots. There are so many red dots on the map, it looks like it has chicken pox. One of the students explains that each dot represents a town, village or settlement in Mongolia that has never heard about Jesus. A large banner hangs above the map, which reads, Our vision is to plant the church in every town in Mongolia and to share the gospel with the entire former Mongol Empire. Wow, that is a huge task. You look at the many red dots on the map. All these students are committing their lives to starting churches in all of these places marked by a dot. They want to tell the entire formal Mongol Empire about Jesus. Do you remember in our first session that we learned about a man called Genghis Khan? He was a fearsome warrior who was so successful in battle that he was the emperor of the vast Mongol Empire, an empire that stretched the entire length of Asia and well into Europe. The students here are so ambitious that they want to share the gospel of Jesus across that entire area. Wow, how incredible. To us, that seems impossible. But we know that God is mighty and can make it happen. Isn't it exciting to think what these students might accomplish for God's kingdom? There's just one last stop on our journey in Mongolia. Batar wants to take us somewhere on our way back to the capital city of Mongolia. Can you remember what that city is called? That's right, it's Ulaanbaatar. But where is Batar going to take us on the way? Many people in Mongolia are really poor and they really struggle to get by, especially in the harsh winters. And Batar is taking us to a place where some of the poorest people in the country can be found. You get out of the car and realize that you are just outside the city dump. In front of you is more rubbish than you have ever seen in your life. 
This is where all the litter, all the rubbish from all the bins in the entire city is taken and dumped. And they pile up into enormous mounds of waste. The smell is awful. A mix of rotten food and dirt. But there's something else in the dump as well. Among the rubbish, you can see some little huts and some shelters. They're built from bits and pieces of wood and tin uh, that have been scavenged from the dump. You begin to see people walking around the dump, searching through the rubbish for anything of value. You think to yourself, do these people live here? Batar confirms that yes, sadly there are thousands of people who are so poor they have to resort to living on the dump among the rubbish. As you continue to watch, you see people climbing out of holes in the ground. Many of these people actually live in these holes, which they've dug themselves. When the city of Ilamantar was built, huge pipes were placed underground that carry electricity and heating. People dig holes to try and get closer to these pipes because the pipes provide warmth. Remember how cold Mongolia can get? This is an extreme way that people are trying to stay warm in the freezing cold temperatures of Mongolia, digging underground, living in a hole to be close to warm pipes. Isn't it heartbreaking to think about how all these people and how little they have? Can you imagine having to live on a dump, searching through rubbish for anything that might be valuable? Batar takes us to a nearby building where a group of Christians run a feeding centre for children from the dump. The children can come in out of the cold and receive a good meal to keep them healthy and strong. As we arrive, lunch is about to be served. As you look at the children, their clothes are dirty, but their faces are full of joy as they sing thanks to God for the food. They tuck into a meal of booze, which are steamed dumplings. They look really nice and filling, and the kids gobble them up as quick as they can. Batar tells you that food is not the only thing on offer at the feeding centre. Here there are games and dancing, and God's word is shared through stories and teaching. As a result, many of the children have come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Isn't that amazing? It's time for our journey in Mongolia to come to an end. It's been an incredible adventure and I hope that you'll remember all the things we've learned. Isn't it amazing what God is doing in this exciting faraway land? The church in Mongolia has grown from four people to tens of thousands. But how has this happened? It's happened because Christians have listened to Jesus and obeyed his command at the end of Matthew's gospel to go and make disciples. In our last session, we saw that Christians giving out winter kits are creating wonderful opportunities to share the gospel. And this time we've learned about students training for ministry, learning how to share the gospel and who hope to plant a church in every town in Mongolia that has never heard of Jesus. And people at the feeding center are sharing Christ too. As they feed booze to children from the dump, they also feed them the word of God. Little wonder the church has grown in Mongolia. So many people are sharing the gospel and the Lord by his grace is bringing many into his kingdom. I wonder, will you obey the command of Jesus as well to go and make disciples? Who are you going to tell about Jesus and what he has done for us on the cross? As we finish our last session, let's pray to God. Thank you, Lord, for all the Christians in Mongolia who have obeyed the command to go and make disciples. Thank you for saving so many people there over the years. We pray that many more will come to know you as their saviour. Please help us to tell the gospel to our friends and family and help us to remember to pray for Mongolia and the people who live there. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, everyone, 
we're nearly at the very end of Let's Explore Mongolia. Thank you so much for coming on this amazing adventure. There's just one last thing to do. We're going to do some stickers and write a prayer for Mongolia. The instructions will come up on the screen soon, so get ready to press pause so you can complete all the steps. And don't forget, if you send us a picture of you with your completed map, you'll receive a special reward as a certified Mongolia Explorer. Thanks for joining Let's Explore Mongolia. Goodbye. <laughs>